In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, what it takes to qualify as an H2B employer uh, when trying to bring over a nanny. Now, I'm not saying in this video these are the only ways that you can qualify. I'm just telling you these are the ways that I've been successful as an attorney here at Frontera Tech Law to help families who wanna become employers bring over a nanny through the H2B program. So this is just one video in our multi-part series on nannies. Before this, we did the kind of introduction overview video. After this coming up, we have what to think about when actually picking your nanny, how to see if uh, somebody might be a good fit both for you and for the program. We have a video where we go through the three-part application pro process with the Department of Labor, USCIS, and the Department of State. We have a video where we talk about what it means to be an employer uh, as opposed to a family that brings on a nanny. When you're applying for something like the au pair program, you're a family, the au pair comes into it. When you're applying for the H2B program, you're an employer, you're employing that nanny even though they might be in your home. So there are differences there to think about. The H2B program is definitely a more complex option, but then you look at it and say, well, what are the advantages of that? And one video talks about that. In another video, we talk about what is the best option to go with? Is it a sole proprietorship or is it an LLC? What are the benefits and advantages to both? And then in another video, I talk about timing and the three cycle strategy. So if that sounds good to you, let's get to it after the break. Welcome back, my name is Damien DeNoble. This is Law Great. I'm here with Frontera Tech Law. What my law firm focuses on is immigration and specifically much of our practice has to do with these H2B visas. Um, I consult on these visas regularly with other law firms. I work with recruitment agencies. I work with my own clients and I've been doing this for a long time. And so you'll notice on this channel, I have a lot of these H2B videos. Well, the most in-demand video that um, I've had is just people are like, we want a nanny, we want a nanny, we want a nanny. And there's this huge childcare crisis. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to do a uh, series. And this is what it's about. And in this video, we talked about what it takes to qualify to be an H2B nanny employer. So let's, let's, let's look at this uh, H2B visa program for employers. The key part here is that it's for employers. So that means that you're approaching this not as a family if you want a nanny, not as a mother, not as a father, you're, you're approaching it as an employer. That means that you have to have either a sole proprietorship or an LLC or possibly an s -Corp. There could be other corporate uh, company structures, I guess, but I haven't used them and I don't, I couldn't imagine a scenario where those would be necessarily more appropriate than an LLC escort or, or sole proprietorship. At any rate, when you pick an entity that you're gonna be applying through, that means that you have to go ahead and set up uh, an employment identification number with the IRS. You have to set up unemployment insurance accounts with your state more likely than not. You have to go ahead and if you're in some states like California has a whole EDD process that you have to register for. You have to set up a state workforce agency account. You probably want to set up a recruitment email and a recruitment number because when it comes time to recruit, as we saw this year for a couple of any clients, the um, volume of mail and calls you're going to be getting is so immense because of the sort of employment situation that people abroad are in, right? Everybody that's abroad really wants to come in and so they bombard calls and emails and so you really want to have kind of special phones and emails set up. At any rate, you want to get ready to be an employer and eventually that's going to mean that you're going to want a, probably a payroll service that's going to handle certain things for you. You're going to want to have a regular payment schedule set up and you're probably going to want to have housing set up for your nanny. Many people choose to have them live in house but it doesn't have to be that way. And you're going to have to kind of think about things like audits, right? The h 2 program audits its employer. So you're going to need to be organized as an employer. You're not going to want to just kind of throw away all receipts or paycheck stubs. You're going to want to have a system and mentally you, the team behind you, maybe there's a couple, maybe it's a single parent, you're going to need to be mentally in a space ready to be very serious 
about this program. So that's writ large kind of the first set of requirements. The next set of requirements is that if you have a desired nanny, and most people do, they have that magical, perfect nanny that they wanna hire. Oh, she speaks the language of my family. Oh, she's so culturally competent. She can cook uh, this perfect kosher food. If you're gonna want that, then your first thing you need to make sure is that that nanny comes from an H2B country, the H2B country list. We're gonna make it scroll here. Magic. Okay, uh, and there's a link at the bottom that you can actually go find the H2B country list in and see if, if your magical nanny comes from a country that qualifies. Are there exceptions to this? I've said in prior videos, uh, there are exceptions for the H2B country list, but not for the nanny category for reasons I don't need to go into here. All right, and so then you have to be able to provide an argument that fits into one of the H2B categories. So again, those are seasonal temporary workers, peak load temporary workers, intermittent uh, temporary workers and one-time temporary workers and your nanny more often than not is going to fit into that one-time category and what that means is you have to show to the uh, Department of Labor that there is a clear start and end period for when you need the nanny and there's a number of ways that we can go about shaping that argument here at Frontier Tech Law. Most often you want to focus on the fact that you're maybe a working mommy or a working daddy, that there's a certain goal that you're trying to achieve after which point the nanny's not going to be needed. And so that's the sort of thing where you really wanna work with a lawyer or somebody that knows the program to develop that. There's certain things you wanna stay away from whenever you're filing an H2B application, for example, saying, I can't find care, that's my reason. COVID has messed everything up. There's no daycares left. There's a childcare shortage. All of those are gonna to lead to a denial, 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 and even, Veteran lawyers who go through the H2B program make that mistake. That's probably the number one mistake I see when consulting with other law firms, okay? You have to have kind of a qualifying situation. If your kids are, so what's a non-qualifying situation? Well, if your kids are like 14, 15, 16, and you're just tired of taking care of them, <laughs> you just want somebody to be at home so you can like rest for two years, you know, or a year with no clear reason why, that's probably gonna be denied, as opposed to you have a young child, two years old maybe, maybe an infant, newly born, and you need to get back into the workforce and you think you need a one, two or three year ramp up to do that, you know? Maybe you're finishing school, right? Maybe you are trying to write a screenplay, right? Uh, maybe you are uh, working in a really intensive job, right? That requires you to just be gone for the majority of the day and your spouse also works and they can't be there to take care of anybody and you don't have family around. And uh, you think if you can just get this child to kindergarten or pre-K age, with the help of a nanny, you're not going to need a nanny anymore, right? So clear start and end date. So that's the other qualification. And again, if we're thinking about things that don't qualify, it's anything that doesn't really have a clear starting reason and ending reason. And that's the key to this visa. And then the other requirement is that the nanny that uh, you pick is, again, we said they're from an eligible country, but they themselves have to be admissible. So they can't have an immigration history where they violated the terms of their status. The most common thing I see is B1, B2 entrants that might've worked on their B1, B2 visa. They might've worked for you in the past and you're trying to bring them in as a nanny. That's gonna get flagged and that's, you know, as, as an attorney, like I need to know that because I'm gonna tell you, hey, you don't wanna do this. If if you aided in any way in violation of that B1B2 status because you paid them as an under the table nanny before, that's not the type of person you wanna to try to bring in through the HGB program. Not only will they be flagged, but you yourself will be flagged uh, for the program, maybe not able to enter it again. So if you have these four elements, meaning you're ready to be an employer and take that seriously. Your nanny is from an H2B country. You have a qualifying reason, right? Under the one-time category usually with a start and an end. And your nanny themselves is admissible. You have the ingredients uh, to file for a nanny visa. We've talked about in this overview video how long they can stay between one and three years and how we want to look at all the elements in your application to figure out which is the best number of years to apply for you right off bat. And I'm gonna explore that in the next video. So I hope this is helpful. Go ahead and check out the next video in the series for more information. If you like this, please subscribe. If you know anybody that needs a nanny, please send us along. I'm taking clients every year. I take clients through about November 10th because that's when we need to take the first step in the cycle. That's kind of the latest that we can do it. So November 10th is the last day that I take uh, clients. And then finally, there is a nanny ebook on H2B visas that you can download. It's right here. Yeah, right here. Santiago's inserting it and it's also in uh, the link below. Thanks so much. 
See you in the next video.